Hello and welcome to a special episode of Laptop Retrospective, and today I wanted to give you just a few thoughts that I've had over the last few days and weeks about the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Fold. Um, it has been announced uh, finally for sale in the previous weeks, and I've had some time to think about it, take a look at the specs, and there are just a couple of things that I wanted to share with you as I kind of try to understand where this device fits uh, in our current lexicon of computing. So I've titled this video the Lenovo X1 Fold, Hype and the Struggle. So let's be upfront. This is an amazing and exciting device and I think it has very fairly generated some hype for a few key reasons. First off, it is the first production fully functional laptop with a folding screen. Uh, this is running Windows 10. There are no real compromises on that front. The size and weight is incredibly impressive coming in just under one kilogram. And for something that size, that is pretty phenomenal. I think it was very wise for them to go with a display of four by three. I would have even happy you've been uh, with a three by two. And it's a good, decent resolution that I think will respect the actual screen size itself. The keyboard and pen is included with most configurations. Uh, we'll talk about that in a bit. The keyboard, in my mind, is really, really cool. I saw another video with someone that had a production model of it. It, it was just so neat, the fact that the keyboard was not only wireless and Bluetooth, but it also charges wirelessly once it is lying on top of the device. Of course, it is 5G capable. It has a 50 watt hour battery, and that'll give you approximately eight and a half hours of use, which would be your full day at work, which is really cool. And of course, this is a ThinkPad product. It's got that branding. It would went through that testing. So theoretically, it should be a pretty durable and long lasting piece of kit. This is where I kind of enter my struggles with the device because this thing being the first has an awful lot to prove. The first thing that we need to acknowledge is that that CPU is not what you would call a heavy lifter. The i5-L16G7, which just rolls off the tip of your tongue, is the same processor used in the current Samsung Galaxy Book S. If you check benchmarks on this thing, 6th uh, gen Intel i5 and i7s will outperform it. If you need a computer that will do many things uh, very, very well at the same time, uh, this is not the device for you yet. The other thing to consider is that you are capping out with a maximum or minimum of eight gigabytes of low power DDR4 RAM. That is it. And that could be a deal breaker for some who could get away with a lower clocked CPU, but do have higher requirements for RAM. But again, we'll talk more about this in a minute. The serviceability of the device is not currently well known, but I am anticipating that this whole thing is probably not meant to be disassembled. Thin computers like this in the Surface Book series are kind of concepts, and concepts are first and foremost a concept and often a product second. The cost also puts this as a niche product for sure, especially for the first generation. You can buy a model without the keyboard and pen for $3,369 Canadian dollars. I don't know why you would. Base model is $3,709 if you have any sense in my mind, and that only gives you a 256 gigabyte drive, so you will be doing a fair bit of cloud computing to compensate for that. A 5 megapixel camera on a device that also claims to be a tablet is interesting. I would be really curious to see what its low light performance is, how good it is at capturing documents and things in different kinds of light. And the only reason that I think the camera is significant is because it is being, it will be pressed into areas that a tablet would expect to perform and five megapixels does seem a bit economical for what is a very premium device. And then of course, ports do need to be mentioned. You do have two USB 3.2 Type-C Gen 2 ports, and that is it. So it's not going to be the connectivity god that you often associate with ThinkPad devices. But to be fair, 
get the right dongle and you can do practically anything with those two ports while charging the device at the same time. And then you have a nano SIM card slot and that is it. So while this device is many things, I think the future of this device is actually going to be more interesting than the device itself. So reducing the costs for the second generation is going to be absolutely mission critical in my mind and I'm pretty sure ThinkPad already knows this because right now it is what I would refer to as executive jewelry. This is a device for someone that needs to work but not work super hard and the price point certainly reflects a device that would have a significant amount of office capital uh, as well as functionality. I think that it's going to be a fantastic device for those people that can justify the expense. Honestly, if I had the opportunity to replace my Surface Book 2 with this, I probably would, even though the Surface Book 2 would outperform it significantly. I think that my current usage of such a device um, I wouldn't necessarily notice all of the drawbacks. Keyboard not having the track point to me is a bit disappointing. Like to me, that is synonymous with what makes a ThinkPad a ThinkPad. And I hope that they're able to figure out a way to do that in future versions. I can understand that putting constant pressure down on the same place uh, all the time to navigate with the point stick might have adverse effects on the screen underneath and was maybe dropped for that reason. I can only speculate. Hopefully we can get different RAM and CPU configurations that maybe will either improve the performance or device or reduce the cost. And again, I think back to the X300, how expensive it was when it first came out, and how when the X1 and the X1 Carbon rolled around, their primary objective was to reduce the cost of that sort of computer so more people could buy it and it doesn't become this rare and executive piece of kit. Needless to say, I would jump at the opportunity to try one of these out in person, but with COVID and just no physical place for me to go and look at brand new ThinkPads, unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to get the opportunity anytime soon, which is regrettable because I really feel that even though my reception of this device might sound very lukewarm right now, I think if I had the opportunity to try it out, I would learn to love it very, very quickly. At any rate, I hope that you enjoyed this quick look at uh, what I think will be an interesting device, primarily in the second generation. Uh, if you enjoy this sort of content and would like to see more, I would encourage you to like the video, share, subscribe, and maybe consider hitting that notification bell. I don't often do videos on current technology, but if you do appreciate my insights on the matter, please feel free to comment down below, and that might encourage me to cover more current projects in the future. Thank you so much, and I will see you next time.